Broly in Dragon Ball Super is so powerful that as a kid, he broke one of the scouters in the nursery as a result of analyzing his power level. Specifically, his energy or ki, a scouter breaking event that has occurred repeatedly over the series where the scouter blows up whenever an individual's power level suddenly surges beyond what the model can handle. What could be happening here for the machinery to blow apart is that for one, we know that energy in Dragon Ball has some aspect of electricity to it. Individuals who of high energy have a lot more electrons at their disposal. Heck, we even see electricity zapping around them sometimes when they power up. We know in the real world, a sudden surge of electricity like a lightning strike always comes with an associated electromagnetic pulse or EMP. An EMP that causes power surges to happen inside any nearby electronics, frying their components, even exploding their batteries. We know the scouter in the nursery is currently an older model and one that could be more sensitive for detecting the usually lower power levels of the children, even exceptional ones like the nearby Prince Vegeta. While we can't read exactly where Broly's power level is in this instance, later we do see that as a kid it seems to fluctuate somewhere between 920, rapidly spiking upwards to something like his originally mentioned 10,000, shooting him way past the average adult warrior Saiyan, whose power level is somewhere between 1,000 and 8,000, and just below that of King Vegeta's 11,000. Broly then went on to survive on the inhospitable planet known as Vampa for two days before his father's arrival, who also became stranded with him. An inhospitable planet is one that is hostile or unfavorable to human life or other forms of life as we know it. This could be due to extreme temperatures, lack of atmosphere, high levels of radiation, toxins, or other factors that make it difficult or impossible for life to exist without significant technological support. In Broly's case, Vampa is a completely barren rocky wasteland with no signs of water or plant life. As we see that Broly never had water in his life, a planet that is roamed by large vampiric beetles and craters filled with a green goo that the large vampa beasts hide inside. Yet Broly's strength at ripping apart the vampiric beetles that scared even adult Saiyans away allowed them to live on just fine, with Broly's gentle heart even earning the friendship of one of the large vampa beasts whose severed ear he wears around his waist. Upon meeting Goku and Vegeta, Broly, having no experience fighting anyone except for simulations with his father, begins to keep up and match the various forms that Vegeta and Goku power up through, with Vegeta remarking at just how insanely fast Broly is at learning to counter their fighting skills. This ability that Broly has is something akin to what's called rapid skill acquisition. You see, the adult brain has approximately 100 billion neurons. Each neuron can make connections with more than 1,000 other neurons, Thus, it has been researched that an adult brain has somewhere around approximately 60 trillion total neural connections. Normally, whenever someone learns a new skill, their brain will initially make some thousand to upwards of millions of connections during the training session, depending significantly on the intensity and focus they put into it. With their brain really going to work to form the new connections and prune out the many bad ones when they go to sleep, where their brain literally replays their memories backwards. And Broly's brain seems to be able to do all of this at once on the spot. As he goes about forming new connections for what would be months to downright years worth of training over the course of their one day fight. But I will say that he could just be that powerful to begin with. Broly eventually is pushed to his first power up after getting shot by Vachita into the ice cold water, where everyone thinks he would surely have perished, with generally someone becoming completely incapacitated in as little as 10 minutes if they're in ice cold water. But Broly Broly wakes up and in his fit of rage causes the nearby water to quickly boil, with his energy creating what is known as a massive maelstrom, whirlpool, or sometimes an oceanic black hole. For comparison, the strongest maelstrom ever recorded had a speed of 20 knots, being 37 kilometers or 23 miles per hour. Broly, on the other hand, seems to be making that one look like a kiddie pool, swirling the water in this one to something in the hundreds of miles, or heck, hundreds of kilometers kilometers an hour, before shooting a key blast out of his mouth that carves its way through six mountains. Broly, as done many times throughout the fight, proceeds to get smacked through and in turn carves Goku and Vegeta through some incredibly thick mountains. Which, for a fun estimate, if we compare these mountains to the real world central Himalayas, we know that the average mountain is about 6,100 meters or 20,000 feet tall, and the rock of a single mountain around the midpoint can be very loosely assumed to be anywhere 
from several kilometers to upwards of 10 kilometers or over six miles in diameter. With that upper end more so going for the large glacier Broly punches Goku straight through. They also fight so fast that they can actually be seen by the normal human eye, meaning that they are moving faster than the average 30 to 60 frames a second that the human eye can register movement at. Or rather, no matter how far away Broly is from you, he is moving across your entire field of vision in less than 0.1 seconds, that is the refresh rate of your eye. Somehow Broly is even powerful enough to fight against Goku in a Super Saiyan God form, even overpowering him as Broly pushes his way through Goku's God energy binding him, catches an energy ball, exerting a force equal to Goku to stop him dead in his tracks, right before grabbing, swirling, and slamming Goku for a count of five precious thumps, with him then carving his face through a glacier. Broly and Goku then come to punch it out inside a sea of molten magma, presumably breaking through the Earth's crust into the mantle, withstanding bone-melting temperatures up to 1600 degrees Celsius or 2900 degrees Fahrenheit. Broly then attempts to drop a massive key spear on Goku, breaking through the Snow Island's crust, causing the molten mantle below to come erupting to the surface. As we see volcanoes erupting in the distance, making Broly's attack in this moment something akin to a planet cracker, exerting the force of multiple nuclear warheads. Where with the death of his father, only adding to what we can call Broly's intermittent explosive disorder, Broly turns Super Saiyan, taking on both Vegeta and Goku at once, who then trick Broly into beating Frieza into the side of a mountain. After retreating to Piccolo, Goku and Vegeta finally fuse to form Gogeta, exponentially magnifying their power and show up just in time to save Frieza, with Broly surviving, getting kicked with enough force to create something of a nuclear-sized crater. Craters that tend to run 320 feet or 100 meters deep, just for another lovable comparison. With Broly then getting shot by a barrage of hundreds of key blasts that has shown throughout the series via ridiculous moon blowing up events can be faster than the 671 million miles or 1 billion kilometers an hour that is the speed of light. Broly then proceeds to shoot out an energy beam that clashes with Gogeta's that literally breaks them into a new universe of strange colors. The official novel states them as breaking the boundaries of the universe, transporting them to this other dimension or reality, where they then shatter themselves out of that universe, exerting more energy than it could possibly handle. To accomplish the first instance of breaking in, scientifically speaking, this can be seen as them tearing open a rift in space or creating something like that of a wormhole, which as a wormhole would require exotic matter or negative energy to fold space in on itself, counteracting gravitational forces. And to power the thing, it might require the energy equal to that of a star like our own, if not greater. However, when Broly and Gogeta's punch shatters apart the reality of the other dimension, in this instance they could be causing a phase transition to happen. Specifically, they are exerting enough energy to transition the fundamental force of the universe that pervades the universe and interacts with particles to give them mass, otherwise the stable minimum energy state for the universe that instead of being called the force is known as the Higgs field. And if a raging Broly and Gogeta were to give this universal field enough energy to unstabilize it, the Higgs field would transition transition to an even lower energy state, wiping that universe clean, deleting everything, possibly starting from scratch with a completely new set of rules. With Broly finally entering his legendary Super Saiyan form, allowing this universal shattering power to come about. But as powerful as Broly is, he does have his own limitations and weaknesses, just like my power to completely ruin the lore of a show to smother it with theoretical facts, Broly's power does make him an uncontrollable rage monster relying on pure instinct rather than any sort of thought out strategy, a problem we see Whis attempt to train him out of later on. Until that time, a smart opponent could evade Broly, biding their time until the strain from his legendary Saiyan form takes its toll, and then rush in for a final blow if they have the power to do so. But if none of this was very exciting, then here's one last interesting fact. Broly's legendary Super Saiyan form is said to be due to the result of a rare Saiyan mutation that only comes about once every thousand years or so, which gives Broly access to a different evolutionary path when it comes to him powering up through his Super Saiyan forms. With us going over Super Goku's abilities and feats in this video available right here at the tap, see you in the next one.